from two Sundays now be Sunday makes in our school on Sunday ne ile eko ojo Sunday we are believing that 40 keys to effective deliverance and we on wo kokoro ogoji mu itusile to muno and we've made quite a bit of progress in explaining all this and it's important that you pay attention to this word particularly in the days in which we dwell and for the fact that a lot of people rush to deliverance ground when actually what they need to do is simple God did not design anyone to be a permanent deliverance candidate. Once the enemy refuses to go away, it means there is something gulling down the enemy in that place. So you need to unglue the unglue the enemy. It's part of the process the Bible calls undo. undo. The enemy has glued itself down. Glue it by undoing the work of the enemy. I'm praying for anyone here. Especially those people. Anytime prayer is strong. Something will say no. No. She can go. It can go. Any part that does not want to let you go. Shall be buried alive in the name of Jesus. Let that amen roar like thunder. Obadiah. The book of Obadiah has only one chapter in it. Obadiah. You find Obadiah after Amos in your Bible. Before you jump into Jonah. It's the book at the front of Jonah. Obadiah chapter 1. Look at what it says in verse 17. One Obadiah 1:17. Says, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. So for you to obtain deliverance, you need to climb a particular mountain called Mount Zion. There shall be deliverance. Two. And there shall be holiness. After those two things have taken place, then the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Let me read it in another way for you. If you refuse to climb on Zion, there will be no deliverance. If you refuse to be interested in holiness, there will be no deliverance. And because of that, possessing one's possession would be an absolute impossibility. And like I've been telling you here since we started this topic, that we need to fight to enlarge our coast. We need to fight to possess our possession. So here you see a very simple formula. Deliverance plus holiness is equal to is deliverance plus holiness. Not deliverance alone. The reason holiness is attached to it is so that the enemy will not reinfect you from the diseases that have been cured. And I've given you various definitions and definitions of deliverance. In the course of this study that we've been studying, I told you many things that many people don't know that it's deliverance. 
Whereas it's actually deliverance. Deliverance is clearing your goods from the house of the strong man. That's a strong man keeping people's goods in his custody. Deliverance is when you take your goods out of that institution. If God opens your eyes and you see the warehouse of the strong man, you will cry and it will be difficult to keep you from crying. You see a lot of people dead, alive, and unborn, but the strong man has their goods in this country. Do I have somebody here this morning who will raise up his right hand in anger and shout this ladder on anyone around there? I clear my goods from the warehouse of the strong man. By the power in the blood of Jesus, shout it three times, and we leave the matter. It is also destruction of satanic dreams. As a young boy in the University of Lagos in those days, I was inside a bus going to the campus. A man sat by my side. He sat close to the door. And you know those those days, even up to now. Sometimes those buses, the doors will just fall down. I said, driver, wait, driver, wait, your door is falling, your door is falling. And driver will wait, the conductor will go and fetch the door back again. The man was by my side. As he sat by my side, I noticed I was sleeping. And the bus went. All of a sudden, the door flew open. And being the one close to the door, sleeping and leaning on that door, it fell straight on the floor and rolled into the gutter. They, we stopped, Aduro, picked him up. Try to clean them up. But what he was saying never left me. When we brought him out, what he said that day never left me. He said, But I dreamt about this. I dreamt about this. I dreamt about this. I dreamt about this. So he had. He dreamt about yes. it. And that evil dream has now come to pass. Can somebody also raise up the hand in anger? Satanic dreams. I am not your candidate. Backfire! In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decree. Somebody is breaking through this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Deliverance is released from altars of affliction. Deliverance is is putting the strong man to shame. Deliverance is to rob those that have spiritually robbed you. Deliverance is to spoil those that spoiled you. May the rage of the spoiler against your life be disgrace in the name of Jesus. Deliverance 
to see it. It's oppress the oppressor. And suppress the suppressor. Deliverance is released from witchcraft cages. Released from witchcraft cages. Deliverance is rolling away stones that hinder your progress. Deliverance is chasing away the giants in your life. Deliverance is rising above your evil foundation. Deliverance is correct positioning. I can go on and on. But we need to make some more progress this morning. Deliverance is finding your place in the market square of life. Finding your place in the market square of life. Deliverance is therefore a cardinal ministry of the church. Whether we now believe it or we don't believe it is another question. I fully and completely sympathize with churches that are not interested in deliverance. Once you check the color of your skin, and it's black, any gospel that does not teach you deliverance is a waste of time and money and resources. Thank God for the ministry of deliverance taking place at Mountain of Fire. But there are a few things that bother me. And that's why we are teaching this message. Many go for that deliverance. But the deliverance does not go for them. They merely disturb the demons and rearrange the problem. Many do fake deliverance. They come to deliverance while removing their vulture fingernails. But after the deliverance, they put on the so many also do vain deliverance. Many waste the precious time of the deliverance ministers. But there are thousands who come to Mountain of Fire. They don't know any pastor. They don't know who the Geo is. They don't know any arrow. They are not interested in the gossips and rumors. They just want deliverance and the total whole of God. They have no plenty friends. And they obtain their deliverance and get their breakthrough. Meaning that deliverance can even be rendered null and void. This is why we started giving you those keys. Key number one, you must be born again. Key number two, you must repent from every known sin. If I'm too fast for you, you need to go and buy the CD. Number three, you must be determined to be free. Number four, you must watch your heart and your thoughts. Number five, you must be conscious of the fact that we wrestle. We wrestle. And six, you must love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your body, with all your soul, with all your spirit, with all your strength. Number seven, you must learn to ask for angelic assistance. 
Number eight, okay, Joe, you must carry out a thorough spiritual mapping of your father's house. Know where you come from. Know what they are going through. And deal with it. So that it does not deal with you. Because if you don't deal with your foundation, the foundation will deal with you. Number nine, you must break all curses and all evil covenants. Conscious or unconscious, break them. Because those are landing places for demons. And number 10 is to locate all demonic entry points and deal with those demonic entry points. This is a place I need to do some small explanation. There is something called the ladder of darkness. There is something called demonic entry point. Without that ladder, without that entry point, without that point of contact, there is nothing the enemy can do to you. But once there is a ladder, there is a stepping stone, there is a point of contact, and you don't close it, they keep coming back. And each time they come, they bring more people, they bring more people, thereby worsening the case of the person. That entry point is anything that gives that power access to your life. Anything, Anything at all. If it's giving them access, it's a point of contact. To some, it's regular sadness. To some, it's where they eat and what they eat. To some, it's boiling anger. To some, it's boiling anger. To some, it's useless arguments. To some, it's the institutions of their body. To some, it's that ear they have attached to the ear on their head. To some, it's what they are using for makeup. To some, it's their appetites. To some, it's their eyes. So once that door is open, you can go for 2,000 deliverance. If you don't close it, they keep coming back. They keep coming back. That point of contact is any act that enables the enemy to have free movement in your life. Is anything that enables the enemy to continue to operate in spite of all the attempts you are making to stop it? You are wearing a night dress from your sinner boyfriend that you have left. As your two dara lo was oru, ti o re abandese night. Or as you are sale, ti o fin sun to da lo was oru, ti o go re abandese le fun o. And now you are complaining about bad dreams. Nisi o wa so pe o la la ti o da. That thing you are wearing, o to was oru ni gives access. O ni o fun o ni afani to your life. See you know a year. This is serious problem. Or to si be lele ide. Anything in your life that enables that power to continue the operation. Or that enables them to restart what you have asked them to stop. Anything that makes it so difficult for the enemy to leave. It is a point of contact. And in my experience, as a pastor, as a man interested in solution evangelism, as a man who is happy when others are free, the greatest entry point is 
that men and women open and that has caused disaster and is causing disaster in our world is the area of sex the easiest way to transfer demons outside marriage. This way. The demons that are going to be transferred, they have no respect for condoms. They jump through the condom to anywhere. That's why any woman who has a husband who sleeps around needs to really pray hard. Here you have your husband. Yesterday he slept with Rose. Collected demons from Rose. The other time he slept with Geminat. Collected demons from Geminat. Then the third day he slept with Chinyere. Collected demons from Chinyere. Next one, Fumi. Collected the demons of Fumi. So, so you collect all that. Then carry it home to the innocent wife. And bombard that with it. And the poor woman is praying. She doesn't know what is going on. This has finished most people. And has caused trouble. So what's in the case? It's so Bad now. So, so bad. Teachers are catching children of primary school inside the toilet. Having sex. It's that bad now. Meaning that a lot of things have been gradually destroyed. There is no casual sex. There is no accidental sex. There is no I was careless. It is a carefully planned strategy from the bottom of hell. To catch people. I want to read this letter. So let somebody wrote to ladies. Next time I will bring the one that somebody wrote to men. Let me read the ladies want to do. He said, ladies, if God should allow him to come back to the earth, she will be disappointed in you. The way you live your life in the name of love. Guys are changing you every day like they change their underwears. They have turned you to a public toilet where they dump their dirty waste. And you call that love? You must be insane. He buys you different things and promises you heaven on earth just to get your back on his bed. You call that love? I pity your life. You are just a good example of a matured monkey. Men freak you with sweet words. Because they know that your brain is not up to that of mosquito. You are nothing but a whore. See the way you dress. Just because you want to attract men. Do you think a God-fearing man will approach you with this shameless rag you call clothes? You must be joking. Let me tell you. Only guys that will play with your heart will approach you that way. Wait, oh. 
Do you need a prophet to tell you that that guy that approached you on the street is just a playboy? He's only interested in banging you on the bed and dumping you. If all you want to celebrate is having many boyfriends, I tell you, they will soon announce your obituary. Just like the testimony that sister was giving here about the fellow prostitutes that they have announced their obituary. If all what you can do is to sleep with guys because they say they love you, they who you are not married to, it means you are nothing but a military dog. You lost your virginity, your pride and your glory to a guy because he asks you to prove that you love him. Can you still remember the bed where you lost your virginity? Because of, because of money, shame on you. They say you even follow your father's mates. And you call them sugar daddy. Just because of material things. You keep ruining your destiny. Let me tell you, you are a waste to your generation. Guys use you whenever they are unable to control their hormones. And they call it flirting. This is strange. Lady, I tell you, your brain has totally divorced your head. A real guy will never ask you for sex in relationship before marriage. Because he will surely hate you whenever you have sex with him outside wedlock. No wonder relationship don't last again nowadays. You are the type that always quotes scriptures on Facebook. You even appear to be holy all the time. But you are very loose. Destruction awaits you. You are you even a Christian in your church. You think just like an angel does. But your life is like that of a dog outside the church. You are, you are only acting as a borrowed vessel. Your hell fire is double portion. Now let me let me ask you. How many of your brothers have married down? Let me tell you. The best thing they do behind you is to mock you. And to make jest of you. Now you are saying all guys are the same. All guys are the same. Who asked you to try all guys? Are you a prostitute? Please learn how to control yourself. Control your womb. Your womb is not a toilet where guys urinate anyhow. Be wise so that you will not be destroyed. That was a letter. Somebody who is not even a deliverance person. An open letter to ladies. I believe God. That if you are in this church, and this, what this person is describing fits you, then the truth, that you are not a member of Mansion of Fire. You are just coming to fill the benches. There are also men like that, very loose men. They complain business failure, that is failing, that is failing. Until you locate this entry point. And deal with it. Deliverance is far.
That was point number 10. Yelikokokewa 11 ikokola no your weapons of warfare e mo ohun ti ohun we le je ogun yin je no your weapons of warfare e mo ohun ti ohun we le ja ogun yin won je that is land the uses the types and uses of spiritual weapons e ni pe ke ko awon emulo ati orisirisi awon we le je ogun to wa land them very well e ko lopo lopo if you don't know all the multiple ones, at least you must know the common working ones. Fortunately, there is a book in the market. It's called One and Under One Weapons of Spiritual Warfare. That can teach you all the weapons of warfare you need to know. But whatever it is, you must know the name of the Lord. It's a weapon of warfare. What the Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tie. The righteous son is there. And he says, and he says, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. You must know the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. You must know that one. You must know the word of God which is your Bible. The Bible says it's quick, sharper than any choice son. It can divide a standard between flesh and bone marrow and it knows the intents of the earth. That's another weapon you need to know. You must know about prayer aggressive violent prayer they are all weapons of warfare you must know about the angels of God the angels of God do what? assist us in fighting our battles. You must know those ones. You must know about the fire of God, which is also a weapon of warfare. So you know those common ones. But there are some also that you can use, which you can find in the book. Twelve. Watch what and where you eat. Watch it. Watch what you eat. Watch what you eat. Watch it. 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 That put our forefathers in trouble. Adam and Eve. Adam and food is still putting people in trouble now. Food is still puts people in serious trouble now. There is something the Bible calls feeding at the table of the devil. Meaning that the devil has a dining table. He is having polluted food that can destroy. Food that can cause trouble. Food that can cause sickness. Food that can initiate a person into a demonic group. Food that somebody will eat and from that day your life no longer remains the same. Food that have been polluted, jazzed, put into magic, used as fetish, taken away from an idol, and served out to people. But it's very careful. Those who are used to eating. Party food anywhere, anyhow. I want to tomorrow that the majority be a real food. Know that sometimes, most of those foods, is to exchange virtues, transfer virtues, transfer trouble, or cause problem for people. And this has caged 
so many people. This is why sometimes during very serious deliverance sessions, some begin to vomit. And they don't know what they are vomiting. They are unconsciously swallowed poison. Some time ago, and they didn't know. Can you lay your hands on your tummy and in faith in power and in non compromising way? If you pray, and there is no problem there, it's okay. You don't lose anything. But if there is something there and you don't get it out, there's a problem. 13. Hate the enemies of God with perfect hatred. Hate the enemies of God with perfect hatred. The psalmist says, I hate them that hate the Lord. I hate them with Perfect That's what the psalmist says. I hate them. I hate them with perfect hatred. I remember that book we published many years ago. Slaves who love their chains shall remain in the so if you don't hate your chains, you are hugging the chains. You remain in bondage. Fourteen. You must be a man and a woman of the word of God. A man or woman of the word of God. What we I say is that you must have a working knowledge of your Bible. A working knowledge of the word of God. You, you must have Bible passages in your brain, in your memory. You must have the word of God read. You must read the word of God every Day. You must be the kind of person who does regular uh, quiet time and you read the word of God every quiet time. Remember, it took three does yet the Lord. It is written. It is written. As it is written. As it is written. As Three. It is written. As it And one rebook. As if people before the devil could flee from the temptation of Jesus Christ. Three. It is written. As One rebook. And devil fled. So you must be able to also say it is written. As Fifteen. You must be holy and live a clean life. You must be holy and live a clean life. Any dirty life will just enable the enemy to overpower you. Any dirty life will just enable the enemy to just cage you. Any dirtiness in your life allows the enemy to just turn your life upside down. You must live a holy and clean life. This is the mystery of why a lot of strange things sometimes happen to Christians. A lot of Christians are living a quiet, silent life of sinning. Dirty, quiet sin. That they think Everyone does not know. Listen, beloved. If you are doing anything and you think God does not know about it, you must be a great fool indeed. The Bible says, a time will come. 
what a man did under his bed shall be proclaimed on rooftop so anything that you know you will be embarrassed if somebody can come to the pulpit and be saying it don't do it live a clean life a clean life will attract clean things to you. Dirty one will attract dirty things to you. It's as simple as that. If you are an unclean woman, you will not attract a clean man. The kind of people you are going to attract they are spiritually dirty people like yourself and this is a very very serious matter and I want you to understand this very very well very very well very soon I might have to instruct our marriage committee I might might have to instruct them that some people when they come to Mountain of Fire from some churches and they want to marry people here we should say no because of what we have seen and what has been happening and we are on duty to protect those ladies but the bottom line is this if your life is unclean you are trapped in clean like a magnet it's a very serious matter 16 you must live a life of prayer and fasting a life of prayer and fasting Jesus said this kind great force without fasting and prayer certain things will not go away unless you join fasting with your prayers they will just not go if you do not add fasting to your prayer 17 you must learn the mystery of spiritual music on several situations in scripture you find demons going away as a result of holy music being performed for those of you who don't have hymn books you don't sing at all you don't do personal place worship those Praises we declare. Praises are a tool of deliverance. Because nobody enjoys it. When they are praising your enemy before you. Nobody likes that all. So when you begin to praise the Lord. In spiritual music. The devils don't like that at all. They don't enjoy people praising God in their presence. They want to leave the place. They want to go away. And for those of us who never participate in praise worship you purposely come late and sometimes some say ah, why are you coming so late they are just they are just doing praise and worship the, the service has not started it's just it's just praise and worship it's not just, just praise and worship. That praise and worship is the only thing that gets from the service. And it has a sanctified, sanitizing power. The Bible says, in that dungeon. dungeon. That's the correct name. Dungeon. The Bible says they sang praises to God and they prayed. And then what happened? The earthquake of deliverance was released. And their bondage broke. The bondage of others broke. 
and others were set free. Because this man there acquired their own earthquake of deliverance. There's only two places that can happen. So some of us need to make a change. There are some people here. But the last one year. They have never participated in the praises and worship. Our fellowship, they come late. Every service, they are never there. It's a disaster, a tragedy. But, but more of a tragedy when at home you don't praise God. At home, no praises. In books, you don't have. And we encourage them from people to buy him books and sing. Eighteen. Learn the mystery. of oil, water, ome, mantle, asho, and sand. Learn the mystery. of oil water omi mantle asho and sand all those things we are taught you here how anointing with oil can break yokes how the water of fire can do wonders even if you don't have water of fire that we prayed on here there is something wrong if you buy your own water and pray on it you can buy the notebook what mystery of water cure you pray on your own water we about the mantle here mantle and the sand which has brought deliverance, healing, and breakthrough to so many people. 19. Pray for revelation knowledge. Pray for revelation knowledge. By February now, we're going to start some teachings here on Monday. The teachers there for those who want to be seeing vision, who want to be having revelation, they want to be having holy dreams, they want to understand the mystery of open eyes. It is for God to open their own eyes to and see into the spirit realm. Those teachings on revelation knowledge will start on February. But you need that revelation knowledge. Because if you don't have it, you will see your friends and call them enemies. Then you will see your enemies. I call them friends. Because you just cannot see. 20. Identify the strong man in charge of your case. Identify him and deal with him. A strong man could be attached to somebody's career. Deal with it. A strong man could be attached to somebody's marriage. Deal with it. A strong man could be attached to somebody's business. Deal with it. Once you see a situation, you pray, you fast, you go for deliverance, you go scriptures, you did all kinds of spiritual exercises and the thing sounds like a rock and it's not moving the next question father show me 
the strong man in charge of this situation. Show me that strong man. Remember that thing that I shared with you. It happened in the early 50s. One of our old fathers in the Lord was praying with a man. He went on three days drive fast. The man was praying for two Went to three days drive fast and started started praying together. On the third day, our dad in the Lord wanted to break his fast. So he took Ogi Pap to pray on it. As he was praying on his Ogi to break the fast, the Lord opened his eyes and said, Son, before you break your fast, look at the stomach of the man you are praying for. God opened his eyes. And he saw a king sitting inside the stomach of the man. And the Lord said, Sorry, son. Your three days dry fast. I've removed all his 21 servants. He still remains the king inside there. Do you want to break? Or you want to continue the prayer? So, when I say strong man is in a situation, you do have a battle to fight. This is where we are going to stop for today. We continue again another time. All eyes closed. As we pray this first prayer, if you are in this service this morning, you are smelling death. Death. You are no straight. Please find a way to this altar. Be on your knees. Smelling it. And you are afraid. Find the way to the altar. And be on your knees. As you pray this particular prayer. This is a prayer of release. A prayer of liberty. A prayer that has helped thousands and thousands. And don't joke with this kind of prayer. Don't say I've prayed it before. Just shout this loud and clear. Stop Jesus, name we pray.